Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Passive Probes. In this short presentation, we'll go over the basics of what passive probes are and how they're used with oscilloscopes. Oscilloscope probes can be divided into two main categories, active probes and passive probes. As the name implies, passive probes are, well, passive. That is, they have no active components and therefore can operate without power from the scope. Passive probes are extremely common and a set of passive probes is usually included with every oscilloscope, from hobbyist to high-end. In fact, passive probes are often interchangeable between scopes, even scopes from different manufacturers, although they will have different performance and other characteristics. Passive probes are relatively inexpensive, especially compared to active probes, and they're also more rugged than active probes. There's a reason why active probes are usually delivered and stored in a hard case, whereas passive probes are often delivered in plastic bags, and left lying on or hanging near a bench. And passive probes are very easy to use. No complicated configuration, just connect the probe to the scope, attach the ground lead, and start probing. The most important characteristic of passive probes is something called attenuation. In other words, how much does the probe attenuate the input signal? This attenuation factor is normally expressed with a number followed by the letter x, such as 1x, 10x, 100x, etc. You'll also sometimes hear people call these 1 times, 10 times, 100 times, and you'll sometimes see them written as x1, x10, etc. It should be clear that higher input levels require probes with higher attenuations, but as we'll see, the probe's attenuation factor also affects things like loading and bandwidth. The two most common attenuation factors are 1x and 10x, so let's take a closer look at each of these. A 1x probe simply connects the scope to the test point without any additional attenuation. This means that 1x probes have high sensitivity and can see small signals more easily. A 1x probe is therefore useful when the signal level is low, say less than 1 volt peak to peak. 1x probes are also suitable for low frequency applications. Why? A 1x probe has low bandwidth because the input capacitance of the scope acts as a type of low pass filter. In low frequency applications, this can actually be an advantage such as the case where we want the probe to filter out high-frequency noise on the measured low-frequency signal. 10x probes are the standard probes supplied with most scopes. They reduce signal amplitude by a factor of 10, usually by incorporating a 9 megaohm resistor in the probe tip to act as a voltage divider. This added attenuation makes 10x probes good for high-voltage measurements. The added attenuation also increases the scope input impedance by a factor of 10, so 10x probes create less circuit loading than 1x probes. One additional advantage of 10x probes is they have much wider bandwidth than 1x probes. The probe tip in a 10x probe contains capacitance that helps cancel out the scope's inherent input capacitance. This is particularly important when measuring signals with high frequency components, like square waves and pulse signals. So how does the scope know if we're using a 1x or 10x probe? In some cases, a scope can detect whether a probe is 1x or 10x and adjust its settings automatically. How? Many 10x probes have a metal pin on the scope side, and if this pin contacts a sensing ring on the scope input, the scope knows that a 10x probe is being used. If our probe and or scope don't support this kind of automatic sensing mechanism, then we have to manually configure the scope when using a 10x or higher attenuation probe. There are also so-called switchable probes that can be used either as 1x or 10x probes by moving a switch on the side of the probe. The position of this attenuation switch can't normally be sensed by a scope, so when using a switchable probe, we have to adjust the scope settings manually. Probe compensation is important whenever using probes, and especially in the case of 10x probes. Probe compensation is used to match the scope's inherent input capacitance with a capacitance in the probe tip. It's a good idea to compensate passive probes before use, since this will reduce amplitude and pulse shape inaccuracies in the measured signal. To learn more about probe compensation and why it's important, please watch the separate presentation, Understanding Probe Compensation. So let's summarize what we've learned. Passive probes are the most common type of oscilloscope probe. They're inexpensive, rugged, and easy to use in a wide variety of applications. The biggest differentiator between passive probes is their attenuation factor, or how much the probe attenuates, or reduces, the level of the signal reaching the scope. The two most common attenuation factors are 1x and 10x. 1x is good for small signals, but they have limited bandwidth. 
On the other hand, 10x probes, which attenuate the input signal by a factor of 10, are good for larger signals, have wider bandwidth, and load the circuit less than 1x probes. 10x probes are, by far, the most common type of passive probe. If we're using a probe that attenuates the input signal, it's important that the scope knows this, and in some cases, scopes are able to automatically detect the attenuation factor of an attached probe. There are also some probes that can be manually switched between 1x and 10x. Finally, remember that properly compensating probes is important for getting good results. Please watch the separate presentation on probe compensation if you'd like to learn more. This concludes our short presentation, Understanding Passive Probes. Thanks for watching.